Hello, Mr. Fraser here. This video is intended to be a companion to your study of A Letter to Daniel by Fergal Keane for your higher critical essay text. Being a critical essay text, you need to learn everything you can about this text and be able to understand it, but also then analyse it under time conditions on the day of the exam. So let's just begin with a bit of biographical information about the man himself, Fergal Keane. Now Fergal Keane is somebody who you might have actually seen on television if you've ever been watching a news channel. He's a special correspondent for BBC News and prior to this he was based in the BBC's World Affairs Unit. Now this is important because so much of what he has done and what he has written about has a global reach. From 1990 to 1994, he covered the township unrest in South Africa and the first multiracial elections following the end of the apartheid regime and the genocide in Rwanda. He was named overall winner of the Amnesty Television Prize in 1994 for his investigation of the, Rwand the Rwandan genocide, this was called Journey into Darkness, and in 1996, the same year of Letter to Daniel, he was awarded an OBE for services to journalism. The important thing to take from all of this, folks, is that Fergal Keane has seen a lot of terrible things in his career. He has been in war zones and seen a lot of mass murder, mass killings, and a lot of suffering. This is important when it comes to understanding Letter to Daniel. So before we get into annotating and analysing Letter to Daniel, I find it really helps to start off with a basic summary of the letter and what's happening. You can't begin to analyse it if you don't fully understand what's going on. So I think it helps to divide Letter to Daniel into roughly three sections. And the first section I would suggest consists of paragraphs one to five. And this is where Keane describes a very peaceful scene in Hong Kong. His baby boy Daniel has just been born and he's been welcomed with open arms, not just by his parents, but by the people around him, the locals within Hong Kong. Daniel is very much presented in a very positive light, as you would expect. It's a very peaceful scene. Daniel seems to be symbolic of hope and new beginnings and mum and dad are just absolutely taken by their new baby boy. Then we get to paragraphs 6 to 10 and I consider this to be the second section of the letter because the tone at this point shifts dramatically. Keen, with his baby boy in his arms, starts to think about all the terrible things that he's seen in his career. All the murder, all the genocide, the suffering children. And he thinks to himself, I can't believe I ever put my professional goals ahead of something as precious as life itself. His priorities are now changed and Daniel is now the most important thing. And you really get the sense that now that he's got his own baby boy, he starts to really feel the trauma of all the terrible things he's seen before because he has a baby in his hands and he can start to think, goodness me, what if this was my son that was suffering? Finally, in the third section, uh, things take a turn again, this time a more personal turn. Keynes tells the story of his own father who struggled with alcoholism and again here we see children suffering, but in just a different sort of way. Keane himself was deprived of a father because of the terrible cancer of alcoholism, as he puts it. And so, with all these terrible things in mind, with the sadness of addiction, and with all the terrible things he's seen in his life, in his career, he looks at his son Daniel as symbolic of hope and new beginnings, and he hopes at the end of the letter that things will be better for future generations. Now before we get into the annotations and the analysis, just a quick disclaimer. In this video, I'm going to take you through some suggestions for aspects of this text which you can analyse in a critical essay. It's possible that I might cover a few things which you haven't discussed in class with your teacher. And similarly, it's possible that I might miss things which you have discussed with your teacher. Just remember that there's no such thing as a complete annotation, so just because it's not mentioned here, that doesn't mean it's not worth your analysis. Ultimately, you should double check with your teacher if there's anything that you're unsure of. So the letter kicks off with the opening words, my dear son, and this lets the reader know that the narrative style used is that of a letter. The letter is obviously directed to Keane's baby son, Daniel. You can infer that much from the title, but as we read this, remember what the purpose of this text was. Keane, yes, he wrote it for his son, but he also broadcast it on radio for millions to hear. So there's two audiences here really. There's baby Daniel, but there's also the British public in general. The letter then properly kicks off with, it is six o'clock in the morning on the island of Hong Kong. 
You are asleep, cradled in my left arm, and I am learning the art of one-handed typing. So immediately here, the letter opens with a very peaceful and calming image, early morning in a far off, beautiful location. And here Keen uses a very charming metaphor in referring to the art of one-handed typing. And we can clearly visualize the author clutching a son in one arm whilst trying to type with the other. It's actually quite cute if you think about it. By referring to this as an art, Keen gives a mildly humorous impression that he has to gradually master this craft. From here Keen continues, your mother? More tired and yet more happy than I've ever known her is sound asleep in the room next door and there is soft quiet in her apartment. So here we learn that Keen's wife is asleep and this is coupled with the image of a soft quiet in her apartment and this just further establishes a very soft and tranquil tone. Keen continues in the second paragraph, since you've arrived days have melted into night and back again. Look at that interesting word choice of the word melted. So like two substances which melt together, they're becoming intermingled and as a result he's having trouble determining which day is which and this is all because his world now revolves around Daniel. What day it is doesn't really matter. Keen continues that the days have melted into night and back again and we are learning a new grammar, a long sentence whose punctuation marks are feeding and winding and nappy changing and these occasional moments of quiet. This is a very rich section. We have here both a metaphor and sentence structure happening at once. Keen is using a long and winding sentence to compare his new lifestyle as a father to a long and winding sentence within a brand new language. This reflects the uncharted territory of his new life. Then in the third paragraph, we learn a bit more about where they are at this moment in time and we learn about how the birth of baby Daniel has been received by the locals in Hong Kong and we see that quote highlighted there. It's a boy, so lucky, so lucky, we Chinese love boys. There's then a suggestion that Daniel brings good luck to those around him and that he is good feng shui. And the main gist of what we can say about this is that Daniel is presented as something very positive. Obviously his parents love him and are absolutely taken by him, but everyone around Daniel sees him as representative of hope, good luck and hopefully new beginnings. Moving on to the next paragraph, Keen writes, We had wanted you and waited for you, imagined you and dreamed about you and now that you are here, no dream can do justice to you. The repetition of the word you here is important. It's used to emphasize the couple's anticipation and eagerness as they keenly await the birth of their child. They waited and waited for him, but crucially, when he was born, he surpassed their expectations. They always knew they were gonna love him, but now he's even better than what they could ever have imagined. We then have a very beautiful description of the setting. Keen writes, outside the window, below us on the harbor, the ferries are plowing back and forth to Kowloon. Millions are already up and moving about, and the sun is slanting through the tower blocks and out onto the flat, silver waters of the South China Sea. I can see the contrail of a jet over Lama Island, and, somewhere out there, the last stars flickering towards the other side of the world. This is a very beautiful and very peaceful description of the wider setting, and this further establishes this very peaceful, calming tone. But what I believe is also important here is the fact that this is all happening outside the window, all this activity, however positive, however peaceful, is outside the window and you do get the sense that Keen and his wife and his new baby boy Daniel are all safely cocooned away from it all as Daniel is now the centre of their world. And then in this next paragraph, which is the final paragraph of what I consider to be section one of Letter to Daniel, you just have yet more positivity. For example, he talks about the glorious dawn sky surrounding him. And overall, in these first five paragraphs, we just have this very positive setting, this very positive series of events. Daniel has been born, everyone loves him, everyone thinks he's gonna bring good fortune and good luck. It's beautiful, it's calm, it's peaceful. And the establishment of this as the tone is very important because as we're about to see, everything is about to get turned on its head. So this section kicks off with Fergal Keen saying that Daniel's coming has turned him upside down and inside out. This is a metaphorical expression which emphasises just how much things have changed for him. Daniel is now the centre of Keen's universe and has totally changed his life. 
And it's at this point he starts to really reflect on things that have happened to him in his past. He goes on in the next sentence to say, Like many foreign correspondents I know, I have lived a life that on occasion has veered close to the edge. War zones, natural disasters, darkness in all its shapes and forms. So we have another metaphor here with veering close to the edge, emphasising the danger of the war zone, and he then elaborates with the list of war zones, natural disasters, and darkness in all its shapes and forms. This emphasises the many dangers of the war zone and serves as a stark contrast to the beauty and serenity and peace of the first five paragraphs. Keen then goes on to list some of the undesirable qualities in this world. He writes, in a world of insecurity and ambition and ego. And here, the repetition of and creates a short list which emphasises those negative qualities of the world. And crucially, he sees these as qualities that the world seems to put above preventing war and preventing the suffering of children, something which he's seen all too much of. Now this next paragraph is really important thematically. We begin with that word choice of haunted. Fergal Keane describes feeling haunted by the memories that he's had before. But what's important is that he's only really starting to feel haunted by these things now that he has a child of his own in his hand. It's at this point that he can reflect back on the suffering children he's come across in his professional career and now it seems to really, really affect him. So much so that Keane struggles to imagine the scenes of children being hurt and abused and killed. Notice the repetition of and there, creating a list of three very powerful examples of word choice. The idea of children being hurt, abused and killed is of course very distressing and very shocking and it's also a stark contrast to the ideas of hope and beauty and birth which Daniel very much represents. This continues when he says, and yet looking at you, these images come flooding back. So he's being overwhelmed by these images from his past. And you really do get the sense that this is only happening now that he has Daniel in his life. Daniel represents hope and happiness and new beginnings. And these contrast sharply with the terrible things that he's seen happening to children in his career. We then have two paragraphs which shows Keane using real life evidence, real life examples of his experience. Flashbacks, if you will, to traumatic times in his career. Uh, in the first example, we have him coming across children suffering from napalm burns in Eritrea. And then in the second part, we have a story from Keane in Afghanistan meeting more children who have suffered at the hands of war and who have lost their parents. Both paragraphs describe very shocking scenes and are both very distressing and upsetting. The point here is that these are yet even more shocking upsetting when contrasted with all the joy and happiness of Daniel and this is what's going on inside Keane's head. He's looking back on these things that's happened to him in his past and he can't believe that he ever prioritised professional commitments and professional achievements over something so simple and pure as the birth of his son. Now Daniel is his priority and he's feeling the trauma of his past all the more because of this. Turning to this final section, the letter then takes a very personal turn and Keane tells the story of his own father who suffered from alcoholism. The big paragraph highlighted there is where the story of the, his father really, really kicks off. And even though the previous section dealt with the horrors of war and the children that suffer as a result, thematically it's very similar here because alcoholism was Keane's father's own war, it was his own horror, and children suffered as a result. Keane himself was deprived of a father figure because of the cancer of alcoholism. Notice that very interesting metaphor and image that you see in the paragraph below. And this links in thematically to what this entire letter tries to tackle, this idea of children suffering and the innocence of children um, being curbed at the hands of traumatic events, whether that be war or alcoholism or any other thing which could corrupt the innocence and the hope which children should bring to the world. And finally, looking at the last couple of lines of this letter, Keane finishes it off by saying, Foolish as though it may seem, I hoped in some way that he could hear, across the affinity between the living and the dead, your proud statement of arrival. For if he could hear, he would recognise the distinct voice of family, the sound of hope and new beginnings that you and all your innocence and freshness have brought to the world. So there we have another good clear link to the themes of this letter. Freshness and new beginnings and hope, these are all what Daniel represents and it's the hope that his new generation will represent these things as well. The letter ends on an optimistic note. 
Joaquin, as a child, suffered at the hands of his father's alcoholism and he would then go on to witness the suffering of children in war zones. Keen now hopes that with the birth of a new generation, represented by his son Daniel, there is hope of a better, more responsible and more compassionate future where children aren't made to suffer. So that is, believe it or not, after 50 minutes, a very brief summary of how you can annotate Letter to Daniel. But just remember, there's no such thing as a complete annotation and there's still more detail that you could go into. This is really just intended to get you started. Hope that's been of some help to you and thanks very much for listening.